Good afternoon, Word of Grace family. Today is Friday, June the 19th, 2020, and welcome to today's edition of Five Minutes of Encouragement. Now, as usual, the scriptures that I referenced during this talk will be in the description box of this video. I ask that you both like and share this video. Hashtag five minutes of encouragement. So I was back there in my office basically crying because I wanted to go outside and play, but it's raining outside and I could hear my wife's voice saying, stop crying, use your big boy words and go do what you gotta do. So I'm here doing what I gotta do. <laughs> Which I will tell you this, <clears throat> a day doing this is better than a day doing anything else that I used to do. And I'm so thankful that I have you as a family to share the word of God with in today family. The word that we're going to do is, or, or we're going to discuss, is going to piggyback on what we did yesterday with practical Christianity. And today we're going to talk about the results of practical Christianity. So what exactly should your life look like when you practically apply the, the, the Christian lifestyle to your day-to-day -day living. Remember yesterday, the thing I was asking each and every one of us to do is to take two to five minutes a day to simply reflect on, digest, absorb exhortation from the Word of God. Exhortation building you up in who He is and who you are in Him. And what is the practical outflowing of that? Well, <clears throat> there's a very practical look at this in the book of Judges. So we're gonna go all the way back over to the Old Testament and look at, a, at, at an account in the book of Judges as to what happens when someone is faced with an attack. Just like, hey, we're Christians and we get attacked daily. What happens when you get attacked? And, and in the book of Judges is the perfect type and shadow as to what should occur in your life if you're practically applying the rules or the or the lifestyle of Christianity. So I'm not going to go through Israel's history and, and what the book of Judges all covers in its totality and, and who were the judges, but we're going to look at a specific judge of Israel in chapter 14 and I believe that his experience in this instance is a type and shadow of your and my perfect experience here on the earth. I'm saying perfect experience because we're constantly, every day, walking towards that perfection. Judges 14, verse five. So Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother and came to the vineyards of Timnah. Now to his surprise, a young lion came roaring against him. So I want everyone to, to get in your mind the picture here. He's going on his day to day. Now, there is a context for why he was going to Timnah, Timna, but he's going down there and in his journey, in his daily activity, a roaring lion came against him. And what happened? And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he tore the lion apart, as one would have torn apart a young goat, though he had nothing in his hands. But he did not tell his father or his mother what he had done. So the attack came, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. What happens when you feast on, meditate on the Word of God? Don't forget, Jesus said that the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. And when you allow that Word to take root on the inside of you, when things happen, that Word will rise up on the inside of you. Or should I say the Spirit Himself will rise up on the inside of you. That is so key to our Christian experience. Let's look a little further. Let's jump now from that place in Judges over into Peter on the screen. Be well balanced and always alert because your enemy, the devil, roams around incessantly like a roaring lion looking for its prey to devour. So I think that is such a wonderful section of scriptures. Now, first and foremost, let's look at what Peter is saying within context of what he's writing. Now, he's talking about casting all of your care and all of your anxiety and everything onto the Lord. And the implication here in the text is that if you don't do that, if you don't cast your cares on him, then Satan can use those cares to isolate you 
When I say isolate you, make you feel isolated, to start to attack you. And, and Satan, listen, he is like, if you ever watch a, uh, a nature show uh, or a show about life in the jungle, <clears throat> how lions will separate the weak or separate the young from the pack. And that's what Satan is seeking to do, is to separate you with your anxiety. So that is the context of what Peter is writing about. He's looking to separate you so that you don't feel like you have a support system when the Lord has already told you he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So that is the context for which that scripture is written. And I believe it applies to every aspect of your life because there's gonna be times when Satan is going to come against you when you may or may not have done anything, but still the spirit has to rise up on the inside of you. And I also think it's very interesting. You ever notice this, that Peter wrote that scripture that Satan, your adversary, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. You know what Jesus told Peter? Jesus told Peter that Satan had already planned to sift him like wheat, but Jesus had already prayed for him. Peter went through that experience and he came out of the other side with a whole new perspective. And on that other side, he can now look back and say, your adversary as a roaring lion, what have you been through that you can look back and say, your adversary, but not only look back and say, but, but build yourself up and have a testimony for other people to help them through the exact same thing. That's part of our goal here. That's part of our job here as Christians. You know, one more scripture I wanna look at along this very same line, and it's out of the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 19, 12. The rage of a king is like the roar of a lion. The rage of a king is like the roar of a lion. I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going to read the last half of that verse because I'm going to stop right there because <clears throat> what Satan does sometimes is in an attempt, is an attempt to get you to think he is roaring from you as the voice of God. So let's just say you've messed up and done something. Let's just say you've not lived up to the, the high expectation. Don't get me wrong, there's a high expectation to whom much is given, much is required. There's a high expectation for Christianity, but sometimes we fail. And then Satan will try to come and bring condemnation, will try to bring guilt. But the word has to rise up on the inside of you. The word which says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Full stop, right there. Do not allow Satan to use your own psyche against you. Do not allow Satan to imitate the voice of your father against you and then separate you from the pack. Because once you're separated from the pack, you're now weak and vulnerable. But always remember that you have the greater one on the inside of you. Always use your, your, your free time, your, your spare time, that two to five minutes a day to build yourself up, to meditate on his word. And when you do that, he will have less and less opportunity to come against you. He will have less and less ammunition to come against you because your armor is wraparound armor and there are no weak spots. Family, this has been today's edition of Five Minutes of Encouragement. As usual, I absolutely love and adore each and every one of you. But more importantly, Jesus loves you. Go make it a great day, family. We'll see you back here on Sunday for service. And oh, and for the men for men's meeting tomorrow. Have a great day.